Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? Yes, indeed. Someone's got to keep Stella Bay's people healthy and energized. Oh, but I am. I get to see plenty of my neighbors here, and I do dearly love a little gossip. Now that can't be. Ms. Ramnareem Wentworth has already exceeded the months. Oh. Dear me. She does have another dose in her allotment. How did I miss this? My, but you are a doll. Here's Neoka's caffeinoid, and if I know her, she's probably ready for it by now. Do take care of yourself, dearie. Charmer, welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above? More or less dangerous than a steady supply of alcohol. Give it in. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Yes, we're in business. Let's go. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. I hope you like being part of our crew, Nyoka. We're real excited to have you. A ship? Well, look at you. I'll find a spot there to call my own for now. Find me when you're ready. Braxton, got nothing for you, sorry. Oh, in that case, he told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town, whole family had fallen sick, and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? We're in agreement that this Braxton is probably dead, right?
Got any news from the rest of Halcyon? We don't get many up. Ooh, you're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial H Mammoths. Aren't they just? When I get to worrying about the marauders outside, the raptodons chewing at the walls, I just turn my transceiver up to drown it all out. Most of the time it's static on account of the frequency being clogged up, but sometimes it's toss ball. So, what can I do for you? Graham's always filling the airwaves with this propaganda, like it's done him any good. All it means is the tossball games get to us in fragments. Makes them real hard to watch. Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. They were pretty distinct. Monarch doesn't exactly have a thriving dental industry and Isaac seemed to get stuck in all sorts of bad habits, dietary and otherwise. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader, other times he'd keep betting on a losing team, started owing the wrong people money. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club. They're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. Oh, thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a Raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. Don't you tell me to calm down. I promised my boy I'd protect him for always. But how can I keep him safe if he's run away? He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Oh, law, Captain. A youngster won't last long in a place like this. Please, can't we help? Please, won't you go and find my boy? He's been pining for an adventure, says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him, a raptodon would snap him up first chance it got. I just know one's rip his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. been listening to those awful broadcasts that the iconoclasts put out. I begged Sanjar to put a stop to them, but did he? No! And now I just know my boys run off to Amber Heights. 
That is, if a Manta Queen hasn't spooled out and eaten his entrails for breakfast already! Thank you. Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouths. Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. Hey, what are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. Oh yeah? What are you saying exactly? Wow. Most of the pencil pushers around here cave as soon as you look at them funny. Fine. We're going. This ain't worth it. I don't have time Eat for it. this. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. If you leave town, watch out for Iconoclast. They're almost as bad as the Raps. Here to do business with Sanjay? Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. 
Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? What a charming notion. One doesn't meet many free spirits in Alcyon. Not outside Tartarus prison, anyway. Forgive me, I'd be positively enraptured. Only, I take it this means you aren't here for Saltuna. I'd been saving a bottle of iceberg aged whiskey for an occasion like this. Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and athletic disappointments. Now, I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but... It seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. now we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. You talk like Graham. Freedom always sounds nice, doesn't it? It makes a rather pretty slogan. But if you sit down and tally up the costs, how you provide for yourself in the absence of aid, how you protect yourself from a hostile galaxy, it starts to lose its shine. Exactly. Intellectualism fuels the train to mankind's future, but the tracks the train runs on are forged from practicality. Mr. Vicar, I don't want to be rude, but I don't think that means anything. Yes, it's as though the good vicar has plucked the very words from my brain. Well? Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. But will that help the people here, Mr. Sanjar? Keep them fed and safe? That's precisely what I'm trying to do. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's a two-pronged approach. The first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Not long, but the devil is always in the details. And the salient detail here is a Bolt 52 cartridge. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. An ordinance, of course. We do things in a civilized fashion here. Not like Graham's iconoclasts. There's nothing the board likes so much as paperwork. I'll need to gather some supplemental materials, but I mustn't get ahead of myself. You do tend to do that. The Bolt 52 will be in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? 
Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. You'd head south along the road and look for a mountain to the west. Not that I'd advise it. It's a terribly dangerous trek. I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? That's terrible! What happened? I'm glad to hear you've dealt with them. They've been causing quite a bit of trouble around town. I've been consumed with other matters of late, but I would have dealt with them. Eventually. Of course I would have. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. A necessary evil for the greater good of society. That's exactly how the board describes it. I'm all for reasonable regulations, but the board hasn't demonstrated the kind of peril that justifies cordoning off an entire planet. Much as I hate to say it, the board's leadership can be incredibly short-sighted at times. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. Back then, it was known as Terra 1. Really? I always thought they were refreshingly straightforward names. After all, the whole point of terraforming was to make them Earth-like. Here, though, the results were mixed. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. And how did that work out? Most regard Monarch as a lost cause. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. Nonsense! They're good business sense! Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. I hope you'd treat them nice whether it was good business or not, Mr. Sanjar. That's what being a community means. Treating people right because it's the right thing to do. Ms. Holcomb is our endlessly optimistic crew hand. It's good for the captain's morale. Hmm. <sighs> A noble thought, Miss Holcomb. Unfortunately, noble thoughts rarely sway board policy. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. That's what I thought! But the senior executives laughed in our faces and insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Many of us chose to stay behind. And as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. 
I don't think I realized how far they'd stoop. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Without the board, chaos would overtake the system. Working within the established order isn't a principle to snub one's nose at, Captain. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community. And being cut off means slow strangulation. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Oh, believe me, I've learned that much. But I'm also not going to leave MSI at a disadvantage. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. He and his followers call themselves the Iconoclasts. Lawless anarchists, all of them. If anyone on Monarch deserves the reputation the board's pinned on us, it's them. I will admit, I am keen to meet their leader. Well, be careful what you wish for. Graham has a habit of ruining everything, and everyone, around him. A chance! They've been doing this for years, and I... Well, let's just say I know enough about Graham to be confident that he won't change. It isn't just that they drain our people and resources. Every radical act they commit cements Halcyon's image of us all as destructive rebels and pushes us further from the rest of the colony. He's lucky the board doesn't take him seriously enough to keep more than a few UDL gunships patrolling Monarch. An Earth Directorate assault cruiser would change his tune. It's almost a shame we haven't seen one around Monarch in a long while. What can I do for you? Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grimm wore her patience thin a long time ago. Or is he not paying you on account of how he tried to fix the thing his own self and busted it even worse and then said you wasn't fixing it fast enough so he's docking your wages again? Not that I got any prior experience with such. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well, I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptid on acid. Laws, no! Sometimes it's canid tea, or mantis warm wings, whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. I reckon she's got a little bit of a squish on this fella. He's sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. Would you? I'd appreciate that so much. Uh, maybe don't tell him I wanted you to ask. Just that you met this really nice lady named Celia, and she seemed... Oh. Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. 
He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like Saltuna or they're my boss. Besides, a man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. <laughs> <laughs>